Hey guys, welcome to Revolution Online. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Pastor Jay is starting a brand new series called Stand Up. I'm praying that it will change your lives and God will speak to you. But before we get into that, let's get into some worship. Hi guys, my name is Neb Tom and Da, and we are about to go into a time of worship and we'll be singing The Blessing. So this is actually one of my favorite songs because of the message that's so clearly stated in there that we are highly favored and God continues to deliver blessings to us. I love it so much because we're declaring it with our mouths and God is letting us know that no matter what time of the day it is, whether it's the morning, the afternoon, the evening, that he is good and faithful forever and not just to us, but our family and generations to come. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pray us into worship. Hey Jesus, I just wanna thank you so much for everyone that's online watching God. I just wanna thank you so much that we're here to praise your name and glorify you, God. I just pray that all distractions are out the window and that we're only focused on you, God. We're here to listen to whatever you have to say, Jesus. In your name I pray, amen. Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing amen. Just one more of you, Jesus. Ooh, we're asking for more. We're asking for more, Jesus. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family, in your children, and their children, and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family, in your children, and their children, and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family, in your children, and their children, and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're 
What's up, Revolution? I just want to start off this message by first saying thank you to all of you who have tuned in as we kick off the new year. It is exciting to know that so many of you are here seeking God at the beginning of the year and committing to the things that he has for us. Tonight, I believe that God wants to challenge you, challenge us in some ways that maybe you've never been challenged in before, or maybe you've never stepped up to the challenge before. And here's the deal. At the start of a new year, it's always a time where we sort of reflect back on the past year. We reflect back on the things that, that took place or certain big moments that happened. And, you know, as I look back on last year, there were some things that I see that I really liked and there were some things that I, I didn't like so much. And so with it now being the year 2021, there's some things that I just really want to press reset on and try again with a new approach in the new year. And maybe you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe for you, you look back at last year and you would say, you know what? There's some things that maybe I need to press reset on and start over, and that's okay. I'm right there with you. But today we're starting a new series, and I want to talk to you about what it looks like and what it means to stand up, to stand up and let our lives look different. Now, if you're a follower of God, then you know that God has called you to live your life different. He's called you to a higher standard than everyone else that you see around you. If you're not a Christian, I think that you're, you're going to see the benefit of what a life with Christ can look like and why it's so important to live a life that's different. And throughout this series, we're going to be looking at the book of Daniel. Daniel is a really cool story, and I want to give you guys some context because context is really what makes this story massively important and stand out. So 600 years B.C., B.C. means before Christ or before Jesus, over in Israel, which is kind of where all the action is going on in the Bible, what happens is there's this guy named Jehoiakim. It's kind of a, a funny name, but he's the king of one of the kingdoms in Israel in Jerusalem, which is the capital. And in the third year of being king, the king of this other kingdom called Babylon, his name was, was Nebuchadnezzar. Maybe you've heard of him or read about him, but Nebuchadnezzar was in Babylon. And they come to Jerusalem and they attack it and they take it over. And this is in the days where warfare was like, we get our boys and we ride over across the desert. And when we get there, we get to your place, we're going to just like take out everyone. We take it over. And, and so this is like, you know, old school warfare. So they, they get to Jerusalem and they capture Jerusalem under King Nebuchadnezzar. Now the Babylonian kingdom and empire was insanely powerful. When I'm talking about powerful, I mean like, in all of the known world, Nebuchadnezzar was the guy. Like, he was it. So they come over, and here's what Nebuchadnezzar, here's what his command and his instructions were. He says, I want you to get some young people. See, in Israel, in Jerusalem, they were God's people. They were, there was something different about them. They had, you know, a different diet. They had different education. They had a different way that they worshipped. They were different people. They were set apart by God to be his people. And Nebuchadnezzar wanted to get some of those people, some of the young youth is the way they describe it in the book of Daniel. And he says this, he says, I want some of the young people and I want you to bring them over to where we are in Babylon and we're going to teach them. Now where Jerusalem is to where Babylon is, is like an 800 mile journey into captivity. This would be like traveling from over Omaha all the way over to like Cleveland, Ohio or to Austin, Texas. This is not an easy journey. Imagine having to take young children and walking 800 miles, old people walking 800 miles. So this is not an easy journey. But what Nebuchadnezzar says goes, and he says to bring these people over to me, and here's what we're going to do. These people that are God's people, the ones that belong, that are set apart, are chosen, they belong to God, we're going to take them and we're going to make them like us. We're going to change the way they eat. We're going to change the way that they live. We're going to change the way that they worship. We're going to change what they think about and we're going to change their names. And the whole goal of this is, is I want these people that are set apart, these, that are God's people, that are supposed to be these different people, we're going to make them like us. The problem was there was this guy named Daniel. And Daniel was very significant and special. Daniel realized that he was chosen by God not to just fit in, not to just do what he was told to do. And so the Bible says this in the book of Daniel chapter 1 verse 8. You know, they had been given these strict uh, commands to eat a certain amount of food, and they didn't have to eat like the cheap food, right? Like they wanted them to, to eat like the king's food, an unbelievable buffet of all of the most amazing food that you can eat, the most amazing things that you could possibly drink. Like you name it, they had it. That's what, that's what there was for them. But look at what the Bible says in Daniel chapter 1, starting in verse 
8, it says, But Daniel resolved, meaning that he decided, he made up his mind, he made the decision in his brain and in his conscience, he resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. And here's why. Daniel had given God his yes. And in a culture, and listen, like, I've been there. I know that it's difficult to be a Christian in middle school and high school. I get it, because some of the things that are talked about and some of the things that are said and, you know, the pressure that you guys get put under, like, it's, it's intense, and I know it's hard, okay? Like, it's hard not to compromise. It's hard not to move away from what you know is right. And being a Christian is more and more countercultural these days. But think about Daniel for a second. Because, Dan, because compromise was not only what was encouraged for Daniel, it was demanded of Daniel. Daniel, I know that you're one of God's people, but you live here now. And so because you live here, you're going to eat this food and you're going to talk this way and you're going to think these thoughts. You're going to process things this direction. But it says that Daniel resolved not to. And what happens when you give God your, your yes is that everything else gets your no. Let me explain it like this. See, I've been married for seven years now. July will be eight years of being married, which is unbelievable and awesome to think about. But on our wedding day, when Raina and I, you know, when we're exchanging our vows, and really we don't even know the full extent of what we're saying to each other, but when I said yes to Raina, what happened is that I said no to every other woman out there. When Raina said yes to me, she was saying no to everyone else. And when Daniel said yes to God, because Daniel knew that he belonged to God, that he was chosen, that he was made by God, he was one of God's people, because God had gotten his yes, it didn't matter what stood in the way, because everything else, compromise and giving up and changing what God said, that got his no. And as you step into this new year, I'm talking to those of you who are trying to follow Jesus. The fact that Jesus has gotten your yes means that there's some things that are going to get your no. Now pause. And I want you guys to just think. You don't have to write this down. You just think for a second. If you've said yes to Jesus, then what have you had to say no to? Because the story of Daniel is not just this story that's placed inside the Bible where you and I get to look at it and go, okay, you know, here's what I'm going to do. This year I've made up my mind and, you know, I'm not going to do X and I'm not going to do Y and I'm not going to do Z. And, you know, I've decided that I'm, I'm not going to be these things and going to be these things. I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to stand up for what I believe in. I'm not going to compromise my morals. And if we just look on the surface level, that's what the story of Daniel looks like. But when Daniel said yes to God, he said no to compromise, and that meant maybe some really potentially dangerous things for him. He was going to tell the king, the most powerful man in the world, that he's not going to eat his food. Well, that might get me into a lot of trouble, but he had given God his yes, and so that got his no. But 600 years after that, Jesus was going to show up on the scene knowing that he was chosen by God, that he was set apart, that he was different that it was more than just making it about him and standing up and, uh, for what's right and what's wrong. It was about the fact that Jesus had given God his yes. And because Jesus had given God his yes, even though it meant him suffering, even though it meant him standing out and being different and being pushed aside and pushed down, he gave God his yes so, so that God could give his yes to us. And I want you to know this, and, and it's going to cause you to to think, and you're going to have to wrestle with this, and you're going to have to, you know, read about this in the, in the new year and ask questions about this if you really want to get it. But you and I, standing up in this new year, you and I taking the place that God's called us to is not just about, it's not about you just deciding that God's called me to be better, that God's called me to be different, so I'm just going to, you know, stand out and I'm, I'm going to be better. That's not what it's about. 2021 is about you and I deciding that Jesus, this year, We're going to give God our yes. And if that means whatever, then that's what I'm signing up for. And if you're going to take this approach, I can promise you a couple of things. Your reputation is going to change. And you're going to have to be okay with that. You may not be able to hang out with the the same group of people this year, and you're going to have to be okay with that. And if you're going to stand up and do that this year, you're going to have to be okay with the fallout. And it's going to be there, and I I don't want to just stand here and tell you differently because that's not setting you up for success. But if you decide 
that 2021 is going to be the year that God is going to get your, your yes. Just like Daniel gave God his yes. Just like Jesus came and his whole entire purpose was to give God his yes. So that as we follow him and give God our yes, it doesn't matter what, it's going to, what the fallout's going to be from this. That that's what you're standing up for. So are you willing and are you wanting and are you ready to give God your yes? To follow Jesus and saying yes and letting the fallout be whatever the fallout will be. Have you given God your yes? See, Jesus lived his life suffering, rejected by men, hated for giving God his yes. And I wonder what it would look like if we decided, me and you, if we decided we made this decision that this year we're going to follow in those footsteps. And it's not about a reputation that we get. It's not about, you know, a certain popularity that's going to be granted to me. It's not that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get to roll with a certain crowd. It's nothing to do with that. It's that this year I'm going to stand up and give God my yes. Are you willing to do that? My prayer is that, that we would be willing to do so. Let's pray. God, we just, again, thank you for this word. And God, the example that you lay out right before us in the Bible and in the story of Daniel, God, how we see how he gave you his yes. And God, that he resolved in his heart not to compromise in the midst of everything that was going on around him and, you know, the cultural movement of that day. But God, he decided that he was going to follow you regardless of what that looked like. God, I pray that you would give us that same type of courage this year as we step into this new year, as we step into the things that you're calling us to. God, we pray that you would give us the courage and the boldness to resolve in our heart not to compromise, but to stand up for you this year. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for everything that you're doing in this place and in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for watching tonight's service. We hope you were encouraged by the worship and you learned something through the message. Comment what stood out to you and please share this video with others. Thank you and have a great week.